I've been uh, dying to talk about this one, and because it's a slow news day, I get to. I have this tweet from Elon Musk, no doubt, replying to me saying, Tim Pool's right. Hat Thank you, Elon. Uh, Elon Musk responded to me saying some truth to this, so some agreement there, when I defined wokeness. And uh, here we have this tweet of uh, uh, Elon Musk. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just making fun of Luke Rudkowski because when, when he was on the show and Elon followed him, he started walking around the house ma- making sure everybody knew that Elon started following him. And he was just walking around with his close personal friend, Elon big Musk. Muscles. He was smiling yeah, he and he was good. like, hey, uh, did you guys hear? And like, what's happened? He's like, oh, Elon followed me. And everyone's like, okay, Luke. So that's what happens <laughs> when you start working out. I hope Luke's what listening. When you have older right. children. Here's the tweet. Just I kidding. said, understanding what woke is, is simple. I like how it says, is, is. It is the modern left liberal culture created by algorithms on social media. It is characterized by cult-like adherence to rapidly changing ideological foundations rooted in various leftist theories. It is social zombism. That's it. That's it. Everybody hyper-focuses on one element or one aspect of the modern culture of the left they disagree with, completely ignorant of the fact that those of us, and there are many, uh, many uh, others who have been doing this longer than I have, those of us who have been tracking the culture war for a long time, have seen so many different forms of whatever wokeness is, you begin to realize after the first few years, there is no ideology. First, it was feminism. Then it was intersectional feminism. Then it was intersectionality. It was feminism, intersectional feminism, intersectionality as a whole, which started including a bunch of other components to it. Then it became critical theory, critical race theory, critical gender theory, and ultimately wokeness. All it means, simply put, it's the modern left liberal culture that has been formed by social media algorithms. It is the political equivalent to a teenage girl crying because people won't like her Instagram photo of her butt. That's what it is. These people go on social media, their world is politics, and they want to get as many likes as possible. End of story. I have some questions about your definition. Sure. Uh, Let me give you an example real quick so you can understand. Here's a tweet from Cenk Uger. He says, I don't even know if, quote, equity is a real thing that anyone outside of 12 leftists and the entire right wing believe is real. The overwhelming majority of progressives agree with Bernie Sanders and me that equality of opportunity is the right standard. Well, hold on there, mister. How can Joe Biden have a national equity initiative? How can every university be talking about diversity, equity and inclusion? And then all of a sudden, Bernie Sanders and the Young Turks are like, (laughs) nobody even thinks equity is a real thing. That is the perfect example of exactly what I'm saying. There is no ideology. It is whatever the thought leaders say on a whim. So when Bernie Sanders goes on Bill Maher and says, I I think we want equality of opportunity, then all of a sudden they all start going, yep, yep, yep. I've always been for this. You could, if you got Bernie Sanders to come out and advocate for laissez-faire capitalism, they would all of a sudden be like, we've always been in favor of capitalism. We're not socialists. That is what wokeness is. Fire away, Ian. I have a bunch of questions, too. I saw you You said uh, it is the modern left liberal culture. You have left slash liberal as if it's one thing. So how do you, like, what, what does this left thing mean exactly? Left liberal, is that the same exact thing? Because uh, that's a definition I want in order to understand your definition. Is it's a Left liberal used? is a tribal reference. That's why it's left liberal. Because the, the political left is characterized by this group. This, this, how, People how do we, want radical sure. change? Not, no, they don't want radical change. See, 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 this, n- not even progressives. Okay. Because you, uh, if you can be uh, a neolib and yeah. be woke. Yeah. You can be a progressive and be woke. You can be a socialist. It's just, are you adhering to the cult-like structure of this? The current thing. Of, the, of current thing. That's, current a, that's, thing. That's, a, that's, a, that's a great way to frame it. Do you adhere to current thing? Yes or no? If you do, you're woke. If you don't, you're not. That's a real simple way to put it. So here's a question I have. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with your interpretation of wokeness, but I feel like it must have started in fairly recent history. Would you correlate it with the rise of social media? It is. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's factually proven. Um, we, we went over this years ago with uh, Zach Goldberg put up the LexisNexis data showing the, the rise of certain terminology okay. appearing in newspapers around the rise of social media. And what ends up happening is you get these academics to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And they're like, hey, these terms come from academia. Oh, man, this proves it. And then people, of course, like listening to academics. So even people who are anti-establishment will see some rogue academics and be like, ah, the intellectual dark web. They must be very smart, know what they're talking about. But they mostly don't. I mean, they do to a certain degree, with all due respect. But 
I had this conversation, as I mentioned numerous times with Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay years ago, where I said, I, I, I grew up on the internet. I watched all of these things happen. I certainly understand critical race theories, emergence, Frankfurt School, March to the sure. Institutions and all that stuff. But what they don't understand is it could have been any ideology at all, any ideology. But the social media algorithms favored these particular phrases for money making reasons. I see. That's so why that's why libertarians founded it is said, I am told, because I had friends who worked for Mike.com, mm -hmm. that the guys who started it were like Ron Paul libertarians. And when Mike.com was first started, it was very anti anti police brutality, very pro Ron Paul, very pro libertarian. And then over a few years it became totally leftist and woke because it was just chasing the algorithms. The reason the algorithms were made was not because it was a conscious effort by infiltrators at Facebook. It was because advertisers said, here are no, no words. Mm. And that's just a runaway train. It happens to align with one ideology. It didn't come from that ideology. So the path of Silicon Valley was really techno libertarian to woke. Yes. So it's, it's, it's really simple if you think about it. An advertiser like Coke goes to Facebook and says, you've got, you've got five posts. Okay. One is screaming to mercilessly beat white supremacists. One is screaming to mercilessly beat, beat communists. One is screaming to mercilessly beat white people or whatever. And they're like, no one complains when someone makes fun of white people. So we don't care about that. But that white supremacist stuff's got to go. And then everyone agrees like, yeah, we really don't want that on the platform. Half the people agree the anti-white stuff has to go. So you start seeing th th this leads to a rise, an inverse rise in white nationalist ideology, because all of a sudden on social media, they're actively saying in their rules, you're allowed to insult white people. Facebook did this. Facebook, I think it was Facebook, forgive me if I'm wrong, but they said that you are allowed to criticize groups if they are coming from positions of power, which resulted in a whole bunch of insane posts. And then all of a sudden they got rid of it. And then a bunch of feminists who are saying kill all men started getting banned and they got angry about it saying we are allowed to do this. But, but simply put, if a comedian makes fun of a white person, nobody cares. A comedian makes fun of a black person, people are going to have an issue with it. Advertisers only care about that. It has nothing to do with cultural Marxism. It has to do with them saying, look, we get 100 complaints when the comedian makes fun of black people. We get zero complaints when they make fun of white people. Or we get complaints from like seven people. Conservatives don't care. They don't boycott. They mind their own business and everyone kind of chuckles. So we have no problem with our ads appearing on that stuff. That weight causes the shift. It is not because the ideology took over. It is because for it, it, is a, it, it is a hyper amplification of the fact that people don't like racist things and tolerate things that, that are, are uh, targeting men or targeting white people, etc. This gives rise to intersectionality, which gives rise to all the other disparate ideologies. But it also explains exactly why woke people seemingly change their minds every day oh, as to what they really believe, because they don't believe anything. So the terms that... Uh ultimately gave us the algorithms that we have now or in the, the the terms of services that we have now were directly correlated from basically who was complaining the loudest like if i saw something i didn't like and i identified it because you know i'm female so i think that's offensive that that sort of early intervention in uh the social media marketplace is what directed this yes mostly it's basically that you take some young person they're bored no one knows them no one cares about them and they want likes they will find a way to get those likes. One of those ways is to post nudes or something. Mm -hmm. So young girls are posting scantily clad images, getting lots of likes and followers. It sure feels good when everyone's following you. I was at VidCon seven years ago, and I remember seeing these like little kids were talking to each other, and one kid goes, you have 80 followers? How? Like, that's creepy. I wonder where those kids are now. All they cared about was their follower count. Some people find through politics. Now, because... Here's how I described it, you know, like eight years ago. The intersectional feminists are basically like white blood cells. It's an autoimmune disorder. We all agree racism is bad. It is, it is detrimental to a functioning economy. We need to find a way to work together. The example of this is how we ultimately got the civil rights movement. And the story, I, I, as I'm told, is Lyndon Johnson, I think it was Johnson, had staff members who were black and he needed his dog taken home. And they were like, we can't. And he's like, why not? And they're like, because we can't use any facilities anywhere. And we have a dog with us. We won't be able to do anything. And he was like, what? What do you mean? Like, because of segregation, we can't even stop for gas or go to the bathroom. And he was like, OK, that's a problem because I got to get stuff done and I need your help. So the, the nature of the economy leads to people being like, oh, this doesn't work. So naturally, we all say these things are bad. So when it comes to social media, 
people are trying to find ways to get clicks and get likes. Well, everyone agrees on this one thing. So then you get young people saying, if I say one, if I say this thing, I'll get clicks. Police brutality videos go viral, but you add a component of racism and it goes quadruple viral. So people start spamming this stuff to make money and mm-hmm. generate traffic. And it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy, creating young people built on this ideology who are inundated with this crackpot algorithmic garbage. And that's why their ideas make no sense, are, are not coherent. And it's a cult. All they want to do is say what they need to say to fit in. That's why Cenk Uyghur comes out and goes, Bernie Sanders is right. Equality of opportunity the whole time. It's like, my guy, you were just out talking about equity like a year ago. What happened? Well, Bernie Sanders said so. And he's got more status than he does. So you got to adhere to whatever the status, status quo is. I felt like before social media it existed still, but you didn't see it. They were like, I remember 9-11 and everybody was on board to go get Saddam and his weapons of mass destruction. Like the message of the day was Saddam Hussein bad. Everyone just put it, put that Ukraine flag in their bio and went with it. And like, but no one knew how crazy it was at the time because we didn't have social media to see ourselves in action. Mm-hmm. And now it, you can obviously see people falling into this narrative, whether I guess far left narrative you would call it. It's just this mm-hmm. radical. Uh, so I, I mean, let me find it like gave us an individual way to to track the data. Right. Like I saw that you posted in favor of this issue and you got a lot of likes. So that makes me question whether or not I should challenge you on it, because it seems like right. all of our mutual friends support you. And it also explains their tactics. The reason why they try shaming you and doing these brigade campaigns, because they're trying to use negative social pressure to make you do what they want or give 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 them what something you have, because they're looking for the same thing. But there does there does seem to be some sort of, um, you know, Marxist or left cultural element that is complementary to it, because that's what it, social media is picking up. on. And in three years, it won't be. In three years, it'll be something different. Well, that would be amazing and refreshing. Well, I mean, look at what Jen Uger is saying literally right now. Yeah. Equality of opportunity, that's classically liberal. He's definitely become a little bit of an outlier and like difficult to... Now, I know this is exactly what wokeness is. The fact that Bernie Sanders didn't know what equity was, this, this is the perfect example. But Bernie Sanders on Bill Maher, he gets asked about what it is, he doesn't know, and then clip. says, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I, w- w- we want equality of opportunity. Because he didn't know what he was talking about. Right. Then all of a sudden they go, I, 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 I agree, I, I've always agreed with that. It's like, bro, that's not Marxism. That's classical liberalism. That's what we've been arguing for. Well, I want to see that happen. I mean, if, that is, if that's what's coming down, floating down the river... Of, of wokeness, that would be fantastic. It will not change the fact that these people are violent cultists. Well, So what will end up happening is they'll say, do you agree with me or not? In this instance, you'll be like, well, I do like equality of opportunity. And then they'll slowly lower their crowbar and say, okay, you're like me. And then they'll go and attack someone else. They're zombies. It's social zombism. It's, they go from person to person. They infect you with their ideology, which is, it's, it's, there's not even an ideology. They infect you with, do what we say or it will be painful for you. Then the person says, I'm just going to do whatever I'm told. Otherwise, it'd be painful for me. And they continue to spread. They're that's the why fast zombies. That's why they go from California to Arizona and everything keeps yeah. happening. They flee because of how bad it is, but keep bringing it with them. It's zombism. So is there a chance that, that what, what wokeness is will ever be something positive? Will it ever be positive if it's just cultural trends? No. The current thing. Racism is bad, right? Yep. Fighting against racism is a good thing. Yep. These people are operating under that premise and it is nightmarish. We, so so they're always going to be fighting against something. They have to hate something. Yep. They have to be against something. And conversely, many on the right are exactly this. And that's why people can't define what woke is. It's a culture of hate is what it sounds like. Every, everybody tries to define woke in some way. And I'm surprised. I see so many people doing these long-winded paragraphs about postmodernism and intersectionality and all these things. And I'm like, these are probably people who only recently started following this stuff. Because I've been tracking this stuff for, for a while now, and there are many people who've been following it longer than I have. But I'm like, seven years ago, I mean, what was it, seven years ago when I did that video for Sargon of Akkad on his channel? Mm-hmm. What we defined as woke was dramatically different. Com- very, very different. It wasn't, it, it was not what it is today. I mean, you, you, you look at the rapid transformation of, you know, saying like, kids shouldn't get sex changes, which then becomes, kids aren't getting sex changes, which then becomes, they get it, but it's rare. Why are you mad to, it's happening, it's a good thing. It's not that the ideology is like they're trying to take over. It's that there isn't one. It just changes. Yeah, I I sense a dialectic. In in woke, it's like a false adherence to a dialectic. Whatever, that's a simple way to explain. There's always this and that 
in the idea of like mm -hmm. the other. There's this, like it was Saddam Hussein in 2003, and now it's Vladimir Putin, or it's white people, or it's the rich people, or whatever. But like, if you're gonna fall into this us and them mindset, you're basically falling into a woke pattern. We got a super chat from uh, Kadia says, Tim, it's simple. The left appeal to authority, the right individually. That's what, what uh, what's woke. Don't overthink it. That's a good way to put it, too. The left is basically, do, are you in with current thing or not? Yeah. And the right is kind of like, you know, I think for myself, what's really splitting everybody is the Internet has allowed for the zombies to co coalesce and for the individualists to expand their knowledge base and, and, and you know, yeah. have a voice to themselves. People that can hold multiple truths at once, like think, oh, Vladimir Putin's a bad guy and Zelensky's a bad guy. It's okay to think that. You don't have to pick a side here. Mm -hmm. Or they're both good guys. You don't have to pick a side. Like, yeah. here, here, Actually, Ukraine's a really good point. Under what Marxist theory is the war in Ukraine written about or supported? It, 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 there isn't. It's just simply put. Nothing in these leftist ide ideologies has anything to do with Ukraine. Yet for some reason, these people are all pro-Ukraine war. They are very much. Has so. nothing to do with leftism. In fact, you could argue that true leftist ideology opposes war. The idea of collectivism wouldn't exist with interventionism or interventionalism, whatever you want to call it. This is good evidence that these people don't actually adhere to any kind of ideology. They just do what the machine says to do. Current thing. Current thing. This Current thing is pro-Ukraine. So we're pro-Ukraine no matter what it means. This is how you end up with Hassan Piker criticizing the military industrial complex and supporting the war in Ukraine at the same time. So bizarre. Because there's no ideology there. It's just, look, they're, they're looking at the system like logic doesn't matter. What matters is all that you agree. So if the left used to be about the military industrial complex is bad and that artifact remains, but today you have to be pro-Ukraine, they will say both things are true at the same time, despite the fact that they can't be. Mm -hmm. Does the relationship wokeness have with social media and the internet mean that someone could use it to steer wokeness in a certain direction? Like yep. if you got something trending, you could decide what wokeness is yes. going to support. Yep, absolutely. I remember I was at a protest for Occupy for uh, Trayvon Martin in New York, mm -hmm. and they were going to march to one police plaza. Occupy Wall Street activists showed up, went to the front of the march, and then started fanning people in a different direction and brought them to Wall Street instead. And then once this huge crowd of people were at Wall Street, these people being dumb as a box of rocks who were just doing whatever they were told, sure. started protesting Wall Street. It was hilarious to watch. They were climbing on the bull and they were like, woo, we're the 99%. And then one of the organizers for the Trayvon protest was like, what happened? Well, you didn't realize these people didn't show up because they cared about anything. They showed up because people told them that's what you're supposed to do. These people don't have lights on upstairs. They're just going, I don't know, just tell me where to stand. That's and the so Occupy Wall Street activists knew this. I used, to, I used to tell people this. It's really funny. When you'd, be at a, when, when you'd be at a march in New York City, and this is knowledge for anybody who lives in New York or was ever near a large leftist march. If you, so I'm, I'm a journalist and I'm filming with my camera and I have no interest in organizing this march. The funny thing is the march is going forward and on numerous occasions, the journalists in front will turn to the left to get a wide shot from an angle and the crowd would follow them and make the wrong turn down a side street. Because all these people thought was, those people are turning, I follow them. The person behind them says, I follow him, I follow him, I follow him. And they all just march in the wrong way. And the organizers would be like, wait, 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 stop, turn around, turn around. And then halfway down the block, everyone would stop and get all confused and then start turning around and then go the other direction. It was hilarious. Left That's, foot, right foot. It's part yep. of why I, I, I hated religion in my early life is this faith, blind adherence to faith, like willing to believe that whatever we're doing is for a greater good that I don't even understand, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to follow that guy like that to me is religion. I never liked it. I understand now that you can believe in things that you can't prove. That's not necessarily evil. It's critical thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, that element needs to be there. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people will take that faith and use it for their own advantage. Yeah, I would say I would think the religions that are exactly what you're talking about are the ones that say don't use your critical thinking, don't question us at all. Like if you were questioned theoretically, if you're a religious leader, you can work with someone and have a discussion, and your values still surface at the top of the conversation. It's I think not I, true. Stronger. I, I think about it this way. Imagine there's a group of people in the middle of a street, and then all of a sudden there's a bang. And every single one of these people starts running north. What do you do? Oh, take cover. Get out of the way. 
Run, la- run west. Yeah. Yeah, get out of the way. Wi- yeah. Why run with the crowd? No. Yeah. No. Just get out of the. Get what out you're of supposed the way. to do is take an, is, is assess the situation as quickly yeah. as possible. When so I tell this story about when I was in, in Venezuela. You had the national guard here. A few blocks up, you had the protesters. Mm-hmm. There was a bang, and the protesters all started running north. And then I ran west. Yeah. I do not want to be in between these two groups. No. Why would I run with them? But a lot of people are really dumb, so they just run in the direction the other people are Dude, running. And you see them you in the movies? Be, you could be running into the fire. It'll show, like, in the movie, yeah. a guy's in, like, Africa running through the savannah, and, like, he's getting chased, but he just keeps running, running. straight in a yep. straight line, and the car's gaining on him, or whatever it is, right behind him. You're like, Dude, run to the left. Like, do something unique. You ever see? Don't follow along. Well, and you ever see Prometheus? Tim's... No, just clips. The, the giant yeah. ship is like a donut, it's rolling, and the woman runs straight. She's like, ah, and I'm like, Run to your right. What are you doing? Get out from under it. That's bad. Yeah, that, that's this is what well, people do. In, in, your example, in your example, in your example, these people are thinking, "I heard a bang, so I have to get away from that." They're not thinking about the other things that are threatening them. They're not thinking about the they're dangers. Not of the they're not thinking exactly yeah. like. And that's that's wokeness. That's so crazy. Is is wokeness a religion? It is a non-theistic religion. Okay. So it is it is characterized by a lot of tenets of of uh, I, I should say behaviors that are associated with religion, but there's no core structure or ideology, so it's completely hollow. Okay. On the outside, if you were to take woke people and a religious group, you would be like, hey, they have very similar tendencies. But then you would find that wokeness has no morals. They don't believe in morals. They have no core ideology. They say random things. And they're dangerous. They're, they're violently adherent to their nothing. All it is is connection to each other. If the group says so, you do it. In fact, I'm not talking about Religious groups in the sense that they act like woke people, like Antifa. I'm saying in the sense that there is a collective structure and a community. But true religious people are not mindless zombies. Mindless zombies can have religion. But anybody who's watched this show has seen numerous people who are devout and, and have faith who are not zombies. Sure. They, they, like, they think about why they believe this stuff. They have a reason they believe it. So I think it's possible that you know, you, th- this this zombie-like mentality has existed in many different groups. Sometimes it possesses a religion. Right now, it's possessing a political faction. Interesting. And it's existed probably throughout history, but with the rise of social media, it's not been as obvious or prevalent. And I theoretically, th- if you control social media right now, you can control the direction of whatever. To, to, to a degree, right? Because we've talked a little bit about the element of some sort of negative feedback loop here. Yeah. That we can't make it positive. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any kind of positive outcome from a mindless zombie cult. Fair enough. You know, like zombies can work together in, in the sense that they all run in the same direction and will attack and destroy. But that's the only thing they do. So if your goal is to wipe out a city, unleashing a horde of zombies is a really great way to do it. San Francisco. Or, you know, if you're China, for instance, and you want to uh, promote TikTok which then zombifies young people and creates more people that are mindless zombies. Yeah, I haven't seen any creative value. Like I see the destructive value of hordes of mindless people or just not even call them mindless, but people that are obsessed with like being victims, like victim mentality, that yeah. kind of thing. I haven't seen anything creative really come out of it. I've seen movies made about it that aren't very good. I would say I have seen some creative things, but it's bad. It's bad art. It's bad stand up, bad comedy, bad movies, bad. Inter- it's awful. I think this, the mindset that I'm a victim is just lead, leads to destruction. It only can, if you think you're, you're, at, you're, you're suffering and you're going to lose or that you're losing, you're going to lose. You, you need to have a positive winning attitude mm-hmm. to win and, and There's survive. There's not even any nobility in it. Uh, I mean, you know, sometimes you see like a, a noble martyr. I don't see any of that. It's just whiny, terrible culture. It's just a, it's just a mob. It's a pitchfork yeah, mob. And sucks. here we are whining and complaining about it. What? It's infective. God, that's the problem. Yeah, with but it. but you, you must understand, uh, you can a controlled burn can stop a wildfire. Yeah, we're we're having that's intelligent true. conversation about it. We're, yeah, we're picking it apart. This is why leftists don't go on shows. Sometimes you'll get liberals and left-like individuals. They will do it sometimes, but overwhelmingly they don't because their only goal is to fit in with the cult. You can't do that by going on someone's show that is not in the cult. All that does is damage your cult status. There's going to be an interesting debate coming up with Clint Russell and a, and a leftist. I'm excited about that. I think. Oh, well, he announced it on the show. Who's, yeah. who's the leftist? I think it was Vosh. Was it Vosh? No, it's Destiny. Oh, it is Destiny. Yeah, oh, yeah. De- he, De- Destiny's not a leftist. He, he's a liberal. He, he's about as centrist as you get. Yeah. I love that guy, man. He's he's observant. And what's up, to Steve? He, he, he defended uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, he oh, just okay. kind of calls yeah, what he nice. sees. I like him. That's good. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a liberal. He's been in the show. 
we disagree on policy. But even like before the show, it's like we agree on on a whole lot because he may have different political views. He leans more authoritarian than most of us. Yeah. But I would I don't know if I'd call him an authoritarian. Maybe because he said we we one of the things I, I, that really stood out was when he said a crisis is the perfect time to force change in a society. And I'm like, okay, that's very authoritarian. Yeah, you know, like, it is. Yeah, my attitude is like you shouldn't manipulate people in their time of need. But he was like, when else would you do it? And I'm like, yeah, not in a crisis when you ask them to vote. I would <laughs> like, not. It's good that you have this perspective. I would right? not. Like, do now it. you see how the other side thinks. Yeah. Yeah. And acknowledging that that's a good time to do it doesn't mean that he's instructing people to do it. Mm-hmm. He's just saying this is when it is. This the best is when time, someone so would see it. an ideal time to do it. And therefore, anytime we go into crisis, you can now assume that there are people who are saying I will now introduce change. There's to a this big time. difference between having it as an observation and like advice <laughs> and carrying it command. out. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.